Nowadays, it's almost impossible to find a new phone that does not have more than one camera. This is a Microsoft. Anyways, on the back, some phones now even coming with more than one camera on the front. Why has it all of a sudden become the case? Uh, why are phones coming with more than one camera now? And the answer can get very geeky very quickly, but the simple answer is that one camera can only capture one perspective and just one perspective is not enough. Now perspective is more of the ability to see something differently. So maybe instead of taking a photo of a bunch of flowers, you want a super close photo on just one flower. Or maybe you want to take a group photo in a room that is too small for you to fit everyone in the shot, unless you use panorama, which is terrible for capturing photos of moving subjects. Don't do it. So, because of these new cases, smartphone makers started making phones with dual cameras, either with a normal camera and a wide-angle camera, like what the LG did with the G5. This is the G6, if anyone was curious. Or a normal camera and a telephoto or zoom camera, like what Apple did with the iPhone 7 Plus. Or something even more niche, where one camera is a normal one and the other is a black and white one, which is what Huawei did with the P9. But over recent years, this has led to the experience being distilled into a set of basically three different types of cameras on a phone. A normal one, or a main one, an ultra-wide, and a telephoto or a zoom camera. But the interesting part which I will be focusing on now is, apart from Apple, pretty much every Android flagship was putting a lot more effort in camera quality for the main camera and not as much effort for the other cameras, the telephotos and the ultrawides. But then we have since gotten some massive improvements in flagships for the other cameras and they have been successful to a point where they are now being implemented in mid-range and budget phones. The implementation, however, is for lack of a better word, a ripoff. Another sad fact is that over 95% of the people watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. Please support us by lightly tapping on that subscribe button. Let's start with mid-rangers. These are phones you'd typically buy for around 400 to 700 US dollars brand new. Some are coming with triple cameras and some even quad cameras, but what you get in most cases is an impressive 48, 64 or even 108 megapixel camera and a couple of 5 megapixel or 2 megapixel cameras that accompany it. These cameras almost always have such poor quality that you end up not even using them unless you are really forced to. Even stuff like how colors look might be completely different on these secondary cameras compared to the main one. Then we go to budget phones that typically range from around 150 to 400 US dollars. And here I actually think some companies should be sued. I reviewed two smartphones recently that actually had fake cameras. One was the GTEL Infinity 8S which in reality had two dummy cameras and one real 13 megapixel camera. Then there was the Techno Camon 16 Pro which had two rear cameras and two dummy ones, but also went a step further by having one real camera and one dummy camera on the selfie. There, on the selfie. Now what I personally think makes it worse for Techno is that the Camon series is actually camera centric. It's an awkward thing to have a camera focused smartphone being one of the biggest fake camera culprits. But why is it that companies engage in such dishonest practices? I'll break it down into three sections. Starting with cost cutting, companies want to do everything they can to spend as little money as possible producing a product. So investing in the same amount of research and development in a part of a phone that is used a lot less than the other is not something they would want to do. So looking at cameras, the main camera will get a decent amount of resources allocated to it because, well, 90% of the time it's the camera you prefer using. The remaining 10% of the time where you use the ultrawide or telephoto ends up not justifying allocating the same level of resources as the main camera. Then we look at marketing. Basically, when it comes to tech products, the majority of people do not understand nor are they interested in the technicalities of tech products. This is why most of you didn't even realize that some phones out there are being sold with dummy cameras. 
This weakness is what marketers then take advantage of by telling you that the product they are selling you has more stuff than it actually has and then bank on your lack of technical knowledge to notice this. So if you see a phone with two cameras and another with three cameras with both of them going for the same price, the most logical choice will be getting the one that looks like it gets you more value for your money. The third one is chipset limitations. So chipset is basically the brains of all electronic devices. In smartphones, the ones with the most powerful brains are the flagships and the one with the least powerful brains are the budget phones. So each chipset has a limit to the size of camera it can handle in terms of megapixels as well as the number of camera modules it can handle. So if a mid-range chipset has a limitation of let's say 120 megapixels, a manufacturer can choose to have the main camera being 108 megapixels and then have the telephoto being 8 and the ultra-wide being 2 megapixels. With the budget chipsets, the headroom is even smaller, meaning that all the resolution is allocated to the main camera, leaving none for others, forcing them to be dummies. Now, I personally believe that advertising should be honest and in the best interest of the consumer, so it should, they should just say it as it is. I hope this video helped educate you a little bit. Till next time, goodbye.